Scout of Stan. Let's talk about this mosquito issue. My goodness, all these scouters and scouts are getting chewed up by these mosquitoes. And there are things we can actually do to change that. Now, to introduce some of the basics of mosquitoes would be difficult because there's many different species of mosquitoes out there. There's, a, along with that, there's a lot of biting insects that will literally make a meal of you. So understanding how they work is important. Generally, a mosquito needs blood in order to lay eggs. They lay their eggs in standing water. They go through a larval stage and then they literally jump out of the water with wings and actually start the whole process again. Now you have to understand some of the risks. Mosquitoes can carry a lot of different diseases like malaria, dengue, fever, Zika, you name it, even Lyme disease. And because when they literally drill into you, they use a, a, a spit, basically, that actually <laughs> helps numb the area so they can actually extract blood from your skin. That material that they inject is actually filled with these viruses. Now, there's many things we can do to mitigate the issue of mosquitoes literally making a meal of you. Personal protection measures should be taken. Wear long sleeve shirts and trousers that minimize skin exposure. You may even want to wear a hat or even in some areas when it's totally infested with mosquitoes and biting insects, you may even have netting that you could put over your face. Now, the use of insect repellent, such as DEET or other kinds of uh, materials that decrease the biting of the insect is important. Now, when you're dealing with repellent, there's two big things that the repellent does. First of all, it makes the skin that's exposed unappealing to the biting insect. Second of all, it disrupts the hunting behavior of the biting insect. Often they're attracted by just the exhalation. The, the breath is actually what excites them uh, to actually hunt you down. And these repellents actually make it more difficult for them to actually locate you. Now you can also treat clothing and gear with pyrolethrins that'll actually add to this protection. Those prevent the flying insect from actually landing on the surface of those objects. Now so often we talk about campsite preparation. When it comes to choosing an area for your campsite, make sure that it's away from any standing water, a swamp or a bog. Those, those are breeding grounds for mosquitoes. These are also areas where they are very attracted. Now, always set up your tents and sleeping areas away from dense vegetation. If you have a jungle-like environment, try to find a clearing for your campsite. Now, the use of mosquito nets and screens on the tent are critical for sleeping areas. Now, where I live in the south, you get some really warm nights. And when you have no protection from the mosquitoes, they will swarm on you. So the use of screens over the bedding area... And and screens on the tent is very important. Now, especially with new scouts, you got to remind them that we're in a mosquito area or even a, a biting insect area. And it's important to keep your tent sealed. So when they're leaving the tent, make sure that they zip up the fly and, and make sure that everything is secure so you can keep the mosquitoes out of the tent. Now, there are some natural remedies that you can use uh, as a method of mosquito repellent. There are citronella candles, there's oils, uh, lemon balm that's out there that you could set up in your dining fly area. These will kind of mask the aromas throughout the area so that the biting insects, it disrupts that hunting behavior. Of course, try all the different alternatives, herbal repellents and any kinds of things like catnip or any of that type of stuff that could actually help in mitigating that hunting behavior. Now, campfires are great because they utilize that smoke to repel mosquitoes. It's a small amount of smoke. We don't need huge puffs of smoke coming out of the woods. What we're talking about is a small amount of smoke from a campfire. Now, typically wet woods work really well to make a very smoky fire. So you will need some that are dry to begin with to create the coals to create some of that smokiness. 
Now, another big thing is water management within the camp. Avoid leaving stagnant water around the campsite. Now, when I was young, we always had these little uh, empty paint cans that uh, we would fill with water. We called them fire cans. And uh, they, each tent would get one little can next to it. And that can would be used in case the, the actual tent, there was a, a fire going on inside the tent. Tents go up really quick. So having something immediately is important. The downside to that is that that standing water is perfect environment for mosquitoes to lay eggs. And that attracts them too. So that fire bucket next to the fire ring needs to be changed out every day. If you get to the campsite and there's a fire bucket already there filled with water, empty it. (laughs) You want to reload that with fresh water. And it's important to do that every day. Any standing water within your campsite will attract flying, biting insects. If you camp on a regular basis, you're going to have scouts and scouters get stung by mosquitoes and other flying, biting predators like that. You may even get ticks, but first aid is very important. Using ointments that are specifically for bug bites that have antihistamines or hydrocortisone cream even would be great for helping control that itching and burning sensation. For first aid, of course, you want to clean the area of the bite. Make sure that there's no stinger left in the body. Then apply the ointment, the bite ointment, and put a Band-Aid on it. That's usually the treatment for a mosquito bite. If you have many, it may not be possible to put a bandage over it. The bandage is really to keep the wound clean. Now, keep in mind, these are puncture wounds. Very small, but just as important to keep clean. Now, this should be monitored for the rest of the day just to make sure that it doesn't get really red or infected or any of those kinds of signs. Also, check for symptoms of a reaction. If you're starting to have symptoms, it is important that you get a medical help as soon as possible. Now, as far as uh, environmental considerations, we need to take that opportunity with our young scouts to make sure that they understand that the mosquito those are an incredibly important part of the food chain of the area you are camping in. Many birds, bats, all kinds of creatures, frogs, you name the creature, even fireflies, eat mosquitoes. Without the mosquitoes feeding them, that chain breaks down. And always remind your scouts that you're camping in their home. This is their environment. This is where they live. They're part of that circle of life that's so important to the environment. It's so important that we protect natural habitats and not make them mosquito-free zones because so many animals rely on them as a food source throughout their life cycle. So taking some of the basics from how to mitigate mosquitoes and manage how to deal with that is very important in scouting. Scouts will have a far better experience if they're not standing there in their swimming trunks complaining about the mosquitoes. That's a charcuterie board for the mosquitoes. So taking the time to literally protect themselves and do some prevention, you can coexist with the mosquitoes in their home. This is just one of those scouting skills that adult leaders need to take on. And we do this all the time. Take those on and teach them to our scouts so that in the future, they can do the same. I want to thank you for all that you do in scouting, and I will see you on the trail. (laughs) 